Thank you, Abbeyfield, for inviting me today to speak to you about my experience of living with dementia. First of all, my name is Keith Oliver. I live in Canterbury. I'm married. I've got three grown-up children and three grandchildren. Before being diagnosed with Alzheimer's, aged 55, back in 2010, I was a primary school head teacher and an advisor for the Canterbury area schools. I retired from that in April 2011. I did have a range of hobbies for a number of years, some of which I've tried hard to maintain. These include reading, travel, gardening, stamp collecting and music. All of these get harder to sustain, but I do try and stick at things and adapt in order to keep the interest going. One thing I've been asked to do today is to talk to you about what it's like to live with dementia. What helps me and hinders me as I try to live as well as possible? Firstly, I would say to you that everyone with dementia is different and their experience of the condition is almost always different. From that, it varies from day to day and sometimes even within a day. Difficulties I confront include problems with short-term memory. I don't tend to forget things as much as sometimes they simply never go in. That's the hard thing, getting those pieces of information into my brain in the first place. Word retrieval can be hard sometimes. Concentration. Poor recall of things I've watched and read. I now really find watching television very difficult indeed. A need to over-prepare in order to compensate. Spatial awareness is hard. My balance, I fall over from time to time and did so the day before yesterday. My self-confidence is affected by this. I get more easily upset and knocked off track and less able to do things on my own, such as travel, shopping. They're good examples. I say to people that often I forget what they say to me, but I always remember how they make, them, how they make me feel. That's quite different from my former self, because as a head teacher, I had to engage with people professionally, serve them, help them, support them, guide them, encourage them, and all of that had an emotional engagement, but primarily a cognitive engagement. Whether I liked the person or not was of very much secondary importance. How could I serve this child, this parent, this governor, or whoever it was? The weather analogy is a good one as well, because sometimes living with dementia is very foggy. Other days, the sun shines and life is clearer. And the third way of seeing it is a bit like a hole punch, where you've got a picture in front of you, and some days that picture has got very few holes in it. So it's quite complete. Other days, the hole punch has created much more of a space than a picture. All of this, you can imagine, is very frustrating, especially when I compare myself with my former self. I do try and develop coping strategies and they need support and love both from personal people close to me and from professionals close to me. I keep busy and I keep involved. I try and do things that make me feel useful and successful. That is the best treatment I can find. Things that I can still do and do as well as possible and feel as though I'm helping to make a difference for others. People questioning me or challenging me is a major trigger for the fog descending. I need support, help, encouragement and agreement and then I live well and the sun shines. I do often challenge the stereotype of people with dementia. I am not old. I am not physically ailing. I am quite physically fit and well. I am often able to present as an intelligent person who tries hard to engage still with others. I feel my professional background here helps. Both the person with the condition and the person providing unpaid care for them live with a dementia, 
and are both affected by its impact, sometimes similarly, sometimes differently. For the first three years after diagnosis, I had good professional support and felt quite well. During that time, I continued to go into a primary school to hear children read, which kept me in touch with my former life, and I enjoyed that. I remember one day, a young child aged nine, saying to me, I saw you in a magazine in my doctor's. And I thought, hello, prepare yourself for an in-depth conversation here with a nine-year-old about dementia. So I was ready for this. Lewis, the child involved, said, yes, and I know your first name. I thought that I learnt a lot from that because he defined me, not by the fact there's an article about me having dementia, but that he defined me because now he knew my name. I had good professional support and began to better understand dementia and try and help others by getting involved in advocacy projects. Then about three years ago, the dementia became harder to live with and my mental health did decline. I have been lucky to have had therapy from the NHS Trust, which has helped, and some support to me with volunteer projects, which is when I feel most well. My wife Rosemary has been consistent in her support and has taken on an even greater involvement in supporting me at 10 projects, including those with Abbeyfield. So that's me now. As I look to the future and think about hopes and thoughts, this is what I come up with. I totally support, applaud and commend the current Abbeyfield Dementia Strategy which runs through until 2020. It is comprehensive, sincere, well thought out and firmly placed to utilise and build staff expertise for the benefit of those in the society's care structure. My needs have and will continue to change and I am most well when those supporting me recognise and respond to this. Abbeyfield's approach is also based upon this. For too long people with dementia have had a raw deal, hence the fear which surrounds the condition and the stigma it attracts. Many of us have a role to play to challenge and address this, so that everyone with dementia is treated with the dignity and respect they deserve. Good quality staff is essential, based upon recruitment, training, retention and rewarding. I know from my time with Abbeyfield staff at the Manchester Conference, this is your view as well. Whilst I want my physical needs to be met, to be well fed and watered, clean, comfortable, pain free, I also want to be well cared for emotionally, intellectually, spiritually and psychologically. I want to be engaged as an individual and within a community, to share the love of the arts, of the environment, nature and the surroundings to the buildings and gardens. I want to listen to others and to be heard myself, to be given time and space to be myself and to seek ways in which to grow as a person at a time when the ignorant might expect me to be in a constant decline. I am delighted that Abbeyfield is establishing what I think is the first deep group in a care home. For those involved, this must not be tokenism, but a beacon for others to follow, to learn from and to adapt and adopt in their setting so that people like me, who will come to a care home setting having been engaged in this type of activity, will be encouraged and supported to continue. I want to see more money spent on dementia care, for those in their own homes or in care, and for research not only into a cure or pharmacological treatments, which we all crave, but on therapies which help people well, help keep, keep, keep people well in the way I have described. I want to see more intergenerational projects, such as those I have been lucky to be involved in, the next generation are the key to so many doors with their enthusiasm and their positive attitudes. Thank you for listening to me 
and I appreciate what Abbeyfield is seeking to do.